TJ Love. My name is John Block. Uh, the story does come with a profanity warning. Uh, <laughs> offer a blessing. May all of you be charmed and none of you offended. <laughs> you got to quiet that voice in your head, man. It is destroying you. What voice is this asshole talking about? That voice, Ray said, I call him DJ Hate. Every trap he spins in your head, man, it is hate. Hate for everybody, especially you. What's Ray blabbing about? Fuck this, I'm getting another beer. Fuck this, I'm leaving. Fuck that, I want a cocktail first. The past year had been rough. I told people I produced music and arts events for a living, which was true, except for the last part. My last four events have been horrendous flops, and I was borrowing money from my parents to stay alive, a fact I loathed about myself. In fact, self-loathing had become a superpower. When my event-promoting peers had a successful event, I felt like an epic loser. When I caught my volunteers slacking, in my mind, I called them lazy shit for brains, but I judged myself for being such an ungrateful asshole. I was a month away from being 30. I was committed to being financially independent, being seen as a respected professional, and I saw myself getting married the next five years and being a provider. This time to grow up. That's why my next event was positioned to be my most lucrative yet. I was co-producing Interdependence, a music and circus festival with Burners Without Borders, a nonprofit composed of Burning Man devotees. <laughs> Our event was scheduled for the July 4th weekend in the Lowell Park. We had gotten the event free of charge, and the Burning Man community would attend in massive numbers. And they did not care how much money they pocketed for the organization, so long as we threw a great party, a fact which greatly supported the John Block Relief Fund. <laughs> I blocked out three months to focus exclusively on interdependence. I was feeling optimistic and excited nine days out as Ray, the head of Burners Without Borders, and I met with the planning committee to present the final details. When the festival ends at 11 p.m., I said, pointing at the PowerPoint, we have 20 volunteers who will immediately start breaking down into three stages and eight installations. As Burners, Ray humbly added, we practice the leave no trace principle to respect the land, so the park will be eating even better shape after the event. I smile as we let our preparedness sink in. Ray and I got to know each other fairly well across these last three months. Yet this moment we noticed it was taking a very long time for anybody from Balboa Park to say anything. Finally, Leia, a woman in her 70s, spoke up. We Googled Burning Man and saw a very disturbing YouTube. <laughs> Naked in the desert, God knows what substances. She trilled off as if completing her thought was just too unbearable. Orgies, her husband Frank spat with revulsion. <laughs> Orgies everywhere. There is no way we're hosting a thousand drug field sex addicts at our village. Frank then put a manly arm around his wife as if he had successfully defended their home from hoodlums. <laughs> I try to explain this event would be fully clothed, respectful, and drug-free. Okay, that last part was a stretch. <laughs> but it was useless. The event was dead, taken down within months of preparation and $40,000 in lost income. After the meeting, Ray and I went to the closest watering hole. Those motherfuckers, I began, ranting about how they had completely dicked us, then about how they were too close-minded to see the benefits of our event traffic, then about how we should sue them for breach of contract, to send them a video of our naked orgy on the yacht we purchased with their settlement money. <laughs> <laughs> then my finger pointing turned inward. I'm such an idiot, I exhaled. Worthless fucking idiot. And that's what he said, the sentence that would change my life. You got to quiet that voice in your head, man. It is destroying you. What voice is this asshole talking about? That voice, Ray said. I call him DJ Hate. Every track he spins in your head, man, it is hate. Hate for everybody. Especially you. What's Ray blabbing about? Fuck this, I'm getting another beer. Fuck that, I'm leaving. Fuck that, I want a cocktail first. Yo, I waved to the bartender. Ray pulled my arm down. I know what it's like to be angry. I was that way all my life. Good for you, I said. Bartender, I waved my arm. Ray slammed it down on the table. DJ Hate is saying nasty things all the time, Ray continued. Probably saying nasty things about me now, right? There's no point in denying that one, so I know. <laughs> DJ hate got so bad for me, I came this close to killing myself just to make him stop. The voice is relentless, always telling me you're broke, you're a loser, you're a fuck up. Hearing Ray talk about DJ hate, I realized for the first time that this voice might just be something separate from myself. How did you break free from it? He told me about a three day self development seminar. That was disappointing. 
I was expecting to hear something cool like skydiving or taking ayahuasca. <laughs> the next day, though, I called the office of the self-development company, telling the guy who picked up the phone that I thought self-help seminars were for suckers and scam artists. <laughs> Then, to my shock and amazement, I paid $500 for register for the next event. And you gotta buy the book to see how the rest of the <laughs> <laughs>